if I was if I had to again take a position on it, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the brand name, which is Bitcoin. I'm going to assume that it's the wrong price for the possibilities that it has. Uh, and I'm going to assume that the path forward from here is north. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I've got some of the most bullish news I've ever covered on this channel for you guys. Very big stuff. First up, BNY Mellon is going to be offering crypto custody. So you get one of the oldest banks in the United States who will be participating in the crypto market. We also got news from crypto mom Hester Pierce at the SEC that a Bitcoin ETP could be approved very soon. And that's going to open the floodgates, my friends. We're going to break it down. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, uh, friendly reminder, make sure you hit the notification bell as well because I'll be interviewing Circle CEO Jeremy Allaire tomorrow. So you don't want to miss that interview. And we're going to talk about everything. Bitcoin, Elon Musk, Tesla, BNY Mellon, all the big news. We're going to talk about the stable coins and crypto regulations as well. So Bitcoin today uh, peaked over $48,000. Right now, it's having a small pullback here, as you can see on the hourly chart. And it's going to build support levels. Let's see what happens. Um, this is all part of the market cycles, but we are going to hit $50,000 very soon, right? Uh, we could bounce off of uh, maybe the support level of $46,000 and head on to $50,000, but we're on track. Um, obviously, I don't like to look at these smaller charts, but rather um, the, the, the larger macro level charts. But it's good to have an idea when we're coming close to a price point like $50,000. And I do plan to take some small profits um, once we've uh, hit that. So uh, definitely looking bullish here, guys, and we'll see how things play out. But here's the big news of the day. Bank of New York Mellon to custody Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. What a headline. Uh, I've talked about it for years in the bear market. Those of you who have been a subscribers to the channel, banks, stock exchanges, credit card companies, um, Wall Streeters, institutions are all going to be entering the market. And here it's coming to fruition. It's unfolding right before our eyes. Very bullish news. And uh, let me give you the details. So Bank of New York Mellon, BNY Mellon, America's oldest bank, is set to custody Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies later this year. The Wall Street Journal reported the news on Thursday saying that the bank plans to eventually treat cryptocurrencies like any other asset so of course you know what one of the things we've talked about on this channel is they're going to position the crypto market the same way the stock market is and other assets you're going to have white glove service you're going to have data analytics research reporting and custody right and that's why these banks are getting involved so here's a quote from uh the ceo of um uh, they had, oh, excuse me, the, the, let me back up here. Digital assets are becoming part of the mainstream, said Roman Regelman, CEO of Asset Servicing and head of digital at BNY Mellon. So they recognize what's happening. This is an emerging asset class. It's here to stay. It's global. It's the disruptive technology and the genie's out of the bottle. Like They can't put it back in. So you better innovate or you die. You better get on board because remember what happened to Blockbuster. Right. They didn't innovate with the Internet and Netflix came along and other streaming devices and so forth and, and uh, sites and they became irrelevant and they died. So that's what's happening here. And that's why all of these banks and stock exchanges are trying to take a position. So in a press statement, BNY Mellon said that its new digital assets unit will accelerate the development of solutions and capabilities to help clients address growing and evolving needs related to the growth of digital assets, including cryptocurrencies. The cross-functional cross-business team, which led by uh, Mike Demissi, if I'm saying his name right, head of advanced solutions at BNY Mellon, is currently developing a client-facing prototype that is designed to be the industry's first multi-asset digital custody and administration platform for traditional and digital assets, the bank said. So they're looking to build something brand new here 
And this is what you want to see, guys. And, you know, they're building it for the masses that are going to be coming in and the rest of the institutional investors. They want to be able to custody your crypto and digital assets the same way they custody your money and your other safety or safe, the items you have for safekeeping, right? That's what they're trying to do here. So I personally didn't know this, but this fact is interesting. BN, BNY Mellon is the world's largest custodian. I didn't know that. Having more than $40 trillion worth of assets under administration, the bank's entry into the crypto custody space would further legitimize digital assets. Absolutely. And the fact that these banks are able to do that is one of the solutions or the key components of getting a Bitcoin ETP or ETF uh, approved, which we're going to talk about later in the video. So BNY Mellon already works with crypto startup Backed, which is, of course, owned by the parent company of the New York Stock Exchange, to provide digital asset safekeeping or geographically distributed storage for securing private keys. Banking giants JP Morgan and Citi are also exploring crypto custody services as the block has Previously reported, last year, the U.S. Office of the Comptroller of the Currency allowed national savings banks and federal savings associations to offer crypto custody and services to their customers. So Brian Brooks' work is uh, is coming to fruition here. The green light he gave to the banks is now rolling out with, uh, with, with all, obviously all the banks in the United States. So this is so bullish. Like I said, guys, this is what's needed for... Uh, new financial products like ETFs and so forth. And, you know, there's game theory here, competition. And you see JP Morgan and Citi are going to try to throw their hat in the ring. Bank of America, I've been telling you guys for years, watch Bank of America. They they have filed and won so many crypto patents. It's pretty crazy how many they have. And they, I think, are working on something pretty big. So it's, 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 it's coming to fruition here, guys. All the puzzle pieces coming together. Stock exchanges, banks, all these folks. And you and I are in the lucrative seat here and position to make significant returns because we've bought the lows. And, you know, the, the majority of the masses are still not paying attention. Yes, crypto is getting mainstream coverage now with Tesla and so forth. There's still a lot of people not paying attention, but they will be when these banks start calling them up. Uh, Mr. Jones and Mrs. Jones, how are you? Um, you know, we, I'd like to present to you a new investment opportunity and we have safe and secure custody. You may have heard of Bitcoin and I think it would be wise to diversify some of your money into that and you can earn uh, whatever it is, you know, as far as returns. So that these are the conversations they're going to be having. And remember who I interviewed, guys, not too long ago, Rick Edelman. Uh, of course, who runs the uh, READACT or Digital Assets Council, which is helping registered investment advisors to be able to pitch to sell and get folks to invest in cryptocurrencies. So once again, all the puzzle pieces coming together here. Now, here is another big news. So we just talk about BNY Mellon, JP Morgan, Citi. Well, what about the community banks and the credit unions? Well, NYDIG is teaming up with Kaseya, if I'm saying your name right, to bring Bitcoin to community banks and credit unions and their customers. Kasasa, excuse me, I said Kaseya, Kasasa Financial Institutions will have the ability, powered by NYDIG's platform, to offer products from buy, sell, hold to Bitcoin rewards. This is being set up on the enterprise level, the medium sized level, and their small level, right? When you think about businesses and, and obviously as it relates to banks. So the full infrastructure being set up here to bring in as many people, as much money in. So this market, guys, is just going to be huge. I, I've said it before in the channel. It's going to be the greatest asset class ever. That's not hyperbole. Because why? Bitcoin is global. It is on the blockchain if you just have 10 bucks and you have a smartphone, you can enter the asset class. There's no gatekeeper. You don't have to be an accredited investor. You could be anywhere in the world. If you have an internet connection, you can participate in the asset class. So that's all the money of the world, so to speak, right? When you think about it's not, okay, just the United States and it's not just Europe or whatever it is. It's anywhere. You could be in Iran. You could be in Venezuela, wherever, man. In Antarctica, you have... A, you have an internet connection, you can participate. That's what makes this um, asset class so great. And remember, Bitcoin and many of the digital currencies and cryptos are hard capped. So there's limited supply. You can't inflate it. So Bitcoin, XRP, 
and so forth our hard cap is a limited amount and that's going to drive the value up right supply and demand economics here so very very bullish news here my friends now the next bullish news <laughs> and I, I told you guys at the beginning of the video, I've got some of the most bullish uh, news ever, right? So Hester Pierce, crypto mom. And by the way, I am in contact with her to get an interview. We're trying to schedule something. And she was on Coindesk's, um, it looks like they have some sort of webinar going on. And she said, we're ready for a Bitcoin exchange traded product. This is great because as I've stated on this channel, Jay Clayton was the holdup. The SEC is the holdup with getting an ETP or ETF going. Let me play the clip for you. I certainly am watching that trend, and it's one that I feel bolsters my position that I that I gave several years ago, which is that it's it's we're ready for an exchange traded product, and um, and so I would like to see an exchange traded product move forward. Of course, the facts and circumstances matter, but I think people are looking for ways through our regulated securities markets to access Bitcoin. So she's absolutely right. You look at the inflows that Grayscale is getting. Yesterday, we talked about BlockFi. They're launching their own Bitcoin trust. So a lot of these big time investors are going through Grayscale because there's no ETF or ETP. And she's been calling for it for years. So she's not the hold up. We know she's on board with crypto and regulations. It has been Jay Clayton, but he's gone. Gary Gensler is, is nominated and, and hopefully he gets confirmed soon. And, um, you know, hopefully we get these, this going, but this is going to open the floodgates. So much money is going to come into the market, guys. Uh, the An ETF is just going to make it, uh, the market so much more liquid and, and, and so much more demand will be uh, coming in. And of course, higher prices. So that's what I'm interested in. So a, another healthy sign of the market, guys, um, is expansion, investments, um, all these respective things, these things are so important because they show the money's flowing in and people are making investments, not just in the cryptos themselves, but the company, the, in the companies, the infrastructure. So new Kraken venture fund to target early stage crypto tech startups. This is great. Kraken, of course, is a crypto exchange. So Kraken Ventures will operate uh, autonomously with financial backing from the exchange. So smart move on their part, right? Start your own fund, investment fund, and, and invest in these startups. And maybe you get a, a slice of the pie there and you're able to integrate it into your exchange that you own, right? So according uh, to a Thursday announcement, Kraken Ventures will be led by former head of corporate development at Kraken, Brandon Gath, and will operate as an independent fund. However, Kraken, the exchange, will provide financial backing as well as guidance and expertise. Startups selected by Kraken Ventures will receive investments ranging from twenty-five, excuse me, twenty-five, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to three million dollars. Kraken told CoinDesk. So I love it, guys. This is what I want to see, and I, I wish I had the money to do this, to start my own fund, because I would absolutely be doing this not just holding bitcoin and the other cryptos but also investing in the companies think about the opportunities of the you know investing in the companies back in the 90s that were building the infrastructure of the market right your googles your apples and, and amazons and so forth so very exciting times and uh it's, it's great to see these things now something that's definitely a trend and it's going to be getting more prominence guys is non-fungible tokens nfts and what's interesting here, we got a rapper and, and you know rap artist Post Malone getting involved. So you got people with from with huge followings and notoriety that are doing this. So social token app Fuyas, if I'm saying that right, guys, I apologize. F Y O O Z offers chance to play beer pong with rap artist Post Malone. The Celebrity World Pong League NFT will bring recipients the chance to play beer pong against Malone. So this is of course a segment of the crypto market right non-fungible tokens nfts and uh, i'm looking to build my own nft soon just to test it i want to test the technology in fact the flare network which is of course a hard fork of the xrp ledger um, they're looking to launch the ability to do this with smart contract technology. So you, you could do it on Ethereum right now. And I, I will let you guys know when I build like a non-fungible token. My goal is not to make money off of it. My goal is to learn the technology and share it with you guys how I did it. And I'll, you know, I'll create something free and distribute it to you guys. And, um, uh, you know, we're going to see more of this, especially in the gaming world, guys. This is going to be big in the gaming world with digital collectibles and so forth. Um, 
So stay tuned on that. There's also something, um, I know I didn't pull it up here, but the Nigerian government, guys, <laughs> you know, they, they, they are so scared of Bitcoin. Uh, in fact, one of their lawmakers today was talking about it. Um, they don't know what to do with Bitcoin. And here's a clip <laughs> uh, where the guy says three pieces of Bitcoin, <laughs> where he talks about um, his son had bought Bitcoin and, and how the value is going up and they don't know how to regulate it. But these central banks, especially in these countries where the fiat currencies are garbage, is they're scared. <laughs> they're scared because people are now being able to take back some power with Bitcoin, which you cannot inflate, which you can't print more of. And uh, let me play a qu quick clip here for you guys. Uh, cryptocurrency has become a, a world, worldwide transaction of which you cannot even identify who owns what. And it's been protected by an app or software blockchain. The technology is so strong that uh, I don't see how, even if we regulate it, I don't know the kind of regulation that we can do. Because another very important thing that we should know is that Bitcoin has made our currency almost useless or valueless. <laughs> you hear what he just said? Bitcoin has made our currency almost useless. <laughs> <laughs> these guys are scared they, they see what's coming but this guy was actually you know he i have to give him credit he was actually advocating for okay we need to regulate it there's no way you can stop it or kill it right it's a global phenomenon and it, to my point of like you could be anywhere in the world some country in you know in africa on the continent of africa and uh you can if you have only a hundred dollars on you you could put fifty dollars into bitcoin or ethereum or whatever it is right so guys it's, it's happening. Just the disruption, the adoption, and the movement. And when you see the big players like banks getting involved, you know what's to come, guys. It, we're talking new all-time high prices, the, the, the ability to make significant returns. So obviously, you do need to be smart, not financial investment advice. Um, you know, talk to an investment advisor, know your tax implications, don't invest more than you're willing to lose, right? This is a volatile market, it's on the rise. But, um, you know, be smart with how you invest. Don't put your your more your mortgage payment or rent into this and, and your life savings. Do not do that. That is not wise. So guys, what do you think about this? Um, I think this is very bullish news. And all the banks, all the stock exchanges, all these credit card companies are going to set up shop and we are going to see this market take off like crazy. So leave your thoughts and comments below, hit the thumbs up button, share this video, and I'll talk to you all later.